Pedro, we're here at this conference, The Physics of Fine-Tuning. From your work uh, in cosmology specifically, what are some examples of fine-tuning? As cosmology gets better, and by, me, by getting better I mean that the data gets better, um, we begin to measure things very, very precisely. And it's pretty fascinating to see how parameters, which we used to know within a factor of 10, we now know with sub-percent precision. Um, and there are a few parameters which are, which are interesting and odd. For example, we know that um, if we look at the universe and we try and tot up the amount of stuff in it, yeah. only 4% <coughs> of the universe is in stuff that we know, you know, tables and atoms and things. 4% um, is a strange number. You know, it's okay, it's not very far off 100%, but you know, it's, it's a strange number. Um, if we drill down a little bit more and we look at the large scale structure of the universe, the way that galaxies are distributed, and what we see is this vast cosmic web. And we, we try to quantify what this web looks like, you know, how much structure there is on different scales. If we see clusters of galaxies, if we see <laughs> holes in the structure of galaxies, you know, if we, and we come up with these very precise numbers. And the, the interesting thing is these precise numbers aren't one. They're like 0.965. And, you know, they're 0.965 measured to a precision of, you know, uh, 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 a thousand. So you know, we, we we measure these parameters incredibly well. So what are you saying what, what, when you're saying it, it's not what what is that ratio of? So this this is a specific number. <coughs> I just pulled a number out of a hat. This 0.965 is how much structure there is on large scales compared to small scales. If we see um, uh, 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 large agglomerations of galaxies yeah. compared to small agglomerations okay. of galaxies, okay. and it's that it's related to that ratio more okay. or less. And we see, you know, we can measure that number very precisely now. And it's it's not, you know, it's not what we would call natural, or you know, it's not a, a simple it, number. Why should it be natural? Well, the, uh, uh, it's an interesting question. Why should uh, you you always expect? You always expect the, the the universe to be simple, and you know what we've okay. learned. What okay. we've learned is it's never simple. It's always a little bit off simple. <laughs> right. is, is the way that I would describe it. <laughs> right, right. And so th that's that's where I see fine tuning kind of questions of fine tuning seeping into cosmology or the kind of cosmology I do. Yeah. So let's let's un let's understand that when you have uh, there's a common number four percent of the universe being composed of ordinary matter, twenty five odd percent being so called dark matter, which you've worked on and the rest uh, near 70% or so being in so-called dark energy. Um, first question is, how do, you, how do you know that? We, what we do is we, we the way that, what modern cosmology does is it maps out um, the universe. It, it produces these mega maps of how things are distributed. And then it looks <laughs> at how these things evolve in time. And it looks for markers in the universe. And from, from looking at these things, mapping out the universe, we can see how it's evolved. We can see how fast it was expanding in the past compared to today. Yeah. And we can actually map out the history of the, the expansion. Now, because the, as you look uh, further into the universe, you're looking back in time. Exactly. So if you look at different slices of the universe from a time point of view, which you can measure because of redshifts and stuff, we don't talk about that, then uh, you can have this sort of temporal slice of the universe and can compare what's happening at each time and get some sort of a, 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 of a, tr of a, of a temporal transformation. It's, 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 it's a bit like doing this kind of very systematic archaeology. Or, you, know, yeah, you just look back and you've got traces layers. of different yeah. time, you've got layers, right, right. and it can tell you what the universe was doing at that time. Um, and you do that, and if you can figure out the expansion of the universe, the expansion of the universe is driven by the stuff in the universe. Uh -huh. And the stuff is atoms. It seems that there's this stuff called dark matter. But it also seems like, and we were surprised more than 20 years ago when we found out that there's this stuff called dark energy. And by measuring the expansion, we can get a very good measurement of what, how much stuff of mm. different types is in the universe. Mm. So that's how we know what the universe is made of. And, and you're obviously using uh, energy and mass equivalent because of Einstein's EMC squared. So you can make the mass equivalence by the amount of energy that you, you, you needed to see this, the different expansions. Exactly, we translate, we translate between <laughs> yeah. the different things. So, so let, let's just use the numbers. You said 4% is an unusual number for what we see, 25 and 70. Um, what? What is the, the naturalness that you might have expected that this is not? <laughs> so the naturalness that I might have, might have expected, and you know, if you were talking about 40 years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. a natural universe would be 
atoms. Yeah. Because okay. that's what we know exists, okay. right? right? So then um, we find that it can't be just atoms because atoms... Things are moving too fast. Being, things are moving too fast. And so um, you might expect then that naturalness would be half and half, you know, oh. dark matter and okay. atoms. Yeah. But, you know, maybe that wouldn't be enough. Okay, so we concede and we say, all right, 10% um, or, you know, Roughly ten to twenty percent atoms. So there's an error factor, but yeah, balance the yeah. dark matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that does seem natural. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but now we know that the universe is expanding in an odd way. The expansion mm. of the universe is accelerating, and it turns out that neither dark matter nor atoms will let, let the universe accelerate. Yeah. We have to postulate there's this an additional source of this acceleration. Yeah. And it's call, not small. And it's not small, it's dark energy. And again, you know, you might argue, well, it's all roughly, you know, 75%, 25%, 5%. It's all, you know, it's almost a third, a third, a third. It's yeah. not exactly, yeah. but it's a third, a third, right, a third. Right. But, you know, it's it's not. It's actually 70, you know, we measure it precisely and it's 75%. So you could yeah. argue that there's an element of fine tuning there. The counter argument is, okay, it would have to have some value. We're measuring it at some point. You know, we're measuring it now, and this is uh, and this is what we're right. Getting. And and that because as the universe expands, it, because dark energy is a is a function of of space, not of stuff, uh, that is increasing. Uh, with time, the <coughs> simplest views of dark energy is that it will take up more. You know, more and more of the universe will be will be will be made up of dark energy. Right. These ratios don't stay fixed over time, right. and so you know, at some point in <coughs> the far future. That atoms and dark matter will be an <coughs> insignificant fraction of the total energy of the universe. Yeah, and if you went back earlier, dark energy was a smaller percentage by the very In fact, nature. we know that if we go <coughs> back earlier, the dark energy was a, was a smaller percentage. Right. Uh, is, is it possible, if, if the naturalness of some har harmonious numbers is something that you look for, and that, that's a very reasonable approach because mm -hmm. the beauty in mathematics and physics is something that has, has, has proven fruitful, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is it possible that these elements might be related to something deeper that would have more of a natural beauty than these odd numbers now? Um, I think... Ultimately, that's what one would try. One wants. One wants to try and figure out if there's kind of a, an, an obvious way of getting these numbers um, in a in a natural way. I I don't think it's it's straightforward because, as, as you know, as we've discussed this, I don't think it's straightforward because these the ratio between these parameters vary over time, yeah. and so there's there's a temporal aspect to it. Right. So well, that, that has its own beauty. Of it has its own beauty, but you know. There's a coincidence thing. You could argue it's a coincidence. Why? Why? Right, let's right. assume that the ratio of these things was a third, a third, a third. Why is it that these things are a third, a third, a third, exactly when we exist now, when we measure it? Right. You know, what if we were a civilization many billions of years in the future and measured it? It wouldn't be. So there's there. It becomes complicated trying to get the, the ratio of these parameters from a fundamental theory. Having said that, people do try. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, th thoughts that um, maybe we don't understand gravity as well as we do, and maybe general relativity, which has been an area of your expertise, is somehow flawed at distances, or and so what we're therefore inferring about dark energy, which is clearly an inference, um, is not correct. I think at the moment, I think testing gravity on the scales of cosmology is a really exciting field. Mm. For, you know, for decades, for a century, we've basically taken Einstein's theory and just extrapolate it. And it's been hugely successful because we get roughly the right results. And every time it's been tested, it's been shown and to be correct. Every time it's been tested, it's been shown to be beyond correct. You mm. know, the precision by which it's correct is always remarkable. Mm. Um, but a case can be made that this is a huge extrapolation. Where it's been mm. mostly tested is on small scales, mm. on scales of the solar system, and we're extrapolating to cosmological scales, which is a little bit too far.